So NVIDIA absolutely wins and crushes AMD in every category, across the board, low end to high end, if we compare everything at MSRP. And even then, some of those cards have some VRAM amounts that could be a concern, especially with like a 3070 Ti and 3070 with only eight gigabytes, that's a bit concerning. I'm, I'm less concerned about the 3080 with 10 gigabytes, but even then, could be a bit of an issue down the road, especially for 4K. However, like I said, I really do think that if you compare the GPUs at MSRP, which is what some of the other tech channels I've seen have done and just called a flat out pretty much win across the board at all price brackets for NVIDIA, then yeah, great. Except that MSRP is absolutely meaningless in the over 2021 and probably extending at least into the first part of 2022. By the way, if you want a little side note on, on it, like, do I think that the GPU prices are going to get better? I mean, our best shot is if Ethereum actually switches to proof of stake anytime soon. There have been some blog posts there saying that they're actually starting to run some tests on the, uh, you know, I'm not super into crypto, but the, the processes and, and uh, changes that they need to make in order to do that shift to proof of stake. And I think that's likely to help the GPU situation, but I think a lot of the GPU miners are just gonna switch to some other coins that are currently less profitable than Ethereum. But I think that those coins could then shoot up in value as the people who are into mining just start pumping those on social media and, and, and all of that. And so I really don't think we're gonna see crypto completely fade away, but I think we could get some, uh, some relief in the market when Ethereum switches to proof of stake, but we still don't have a set date on that. And whatever dates we have been getting in predictions have continued to get pushed back. But anyway, that's not the main topic of today's video, other than the fact that, guys, that's what's really driving the, the market prices right now and why they're absolutely insane and why MSRP is completely meaningless. So who actually wins? Well, I mean, for me, I spent all of 2021, well, I mean, okay, finally ended up buying at the end of August, uh, almost the beginning of September, and I had an RTX 2070, and I wanted to upgrade it. And for me personally, what it ended up winning? Well, I wanted a 3080, but I ended up with an RX 6800 XT. And if you follow my channel, you already know that. But why did I do that? Well, I actually do think the 3080 is a better card than a 6800 XT. And at MSRP, they're priced so close that I would absolutely buy the 3080, even though it has less VRAM. That's really its, it's only major loss. Unless you're, I mean, guys, I know some of you point out, well, in Linux, you have to have AMD. Okay, well, I'm not, I don't play on Linux, so. Uh, and th there's all sorts of other little uh, minor situations, okay? And I even actually prefer AMD's software. We'll talk about drivers in a minute. But uh, in general, I would actually pay more money for a 3080. But how much more money are you willing to pay? The only major advantage that matters much to me is DLSS. Ray tracing, much less so. Honestly, even if I had bought that 3080, I wanna play at 4K and honestly, I shoot for around 90 FPS. And turning on ray tracing just has such a huge uh, impact to the performance that even though you do get a noticeable bump in image quality, I would rather turn that off even if I had like an RTX 3090. I'd be pushing more into higher frame rate gaming with ray tracing off more often than I'd actually want to turn that RT on because I notice a huge difference between like 60 FPS and 90 FPS in terms of my actual enjoyment and smoothness of the gameplay. Now, that personal preference can factor a lot into this, which is why I really think in terms of who wins, it really depends on your thoughts on, on those two things, ray tracing and DLSS. Now, for me, the ray tracing, like I said, isn't that big of a deal this generation. I think we need faster hardware, even than the 3090, before I'm convinced that ray tracing is worth turning it on. However, I think DLSS is really cool. And AMD did a fantastic job this year of trying to at least get something out there to help out with, which is FSR. And I think that at 4K, 
FSR does compete really well because uh, 4K ultra quality FSR does look very good and it competes pretty well with DLSS running at the quality setting. The main problem is that DLSS can uh, do uh, more aggressive settings like going down to the balanced or performance can look reasonably okay. Whereas with FSR, as you step down to those lower rendering resolutions, it really does kind of fail to compete. And then again, if we're not talking about it 4K, but if we're talking at 1080p or 1440p, I think FSR is not very usable at 1080p. And at 1440p, the ultra quality setting is okay, but Honestly, a lot of times I'd rather just turn down other graphic settings uh, because I can, I can still usually see that FSR is turned on at 1440p. But at 1440p, at least the ultra quality does compete pretty well with DLSS quality because I can also tell when DLSS is on. Even in its newer versions, I generally do see some softening to the image and sometimes you get some image artifacts. The ghosting has gotten a lot better, but it is still there and does bother me in some games. But anyway, what I'm getting at here is it's really hard to say who wins because AMD did a fantastic job this year as far as actually mostly catching up to NVIDIA in terms of actual just normal rasterized performance. And that is so good to see. And there's, you know, there's a lot of rumors and leaks floating around about the next gen that we should see at the end of 2022, um, where it's, it's possible that we'll see at least in rasterized performance, AMD actually with just a flat out performance lead over NVIDIA. We'll see how all of that plays out. But the top end, uh, at least rasterized crown, might go to AMD this time around. We'll see. But given the uh, huge jump they made going to RDNA 1 and then RDNA 2, the jump to RDNA 3 could be really impressive. I'm so excited to see what happens there. But anyway, they've done a fantastic job catching up, but they do still have those uh, feature uh, downsides, right, with the DLSS in my opinion, being the biggest deal, deal still, uh, still at this point. Um, now, what could change that? Well, this video is more about who won 2021, not you know who's going to win in 2022. But I am interested to see Intel's um, XESS or XS or sh I, I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, um, it, as a possible strong competitor to DLSS that should have some fallback support for all GPUs, including AMD GPUs. So I'll be really interested to see where we go with that. And also if AMD has some other kind of um, uh, upscaling uh, alternative or maybe a 2.0 version to FSR coming out in the near future. But hey, again, I'm getting off topic. Let's go back to 2021. So in 2021, like I said, I think at, at even performance and pricing tiers, NVIDIA wins because even if you don't care that much about ray tracing, it still has that feature and the DLSS is a really cool feature. It just is. And FSR helps but doesn't quite get the job done. AMD also uh, on some cards, pretty much everything except for the RTX 3060 versus the 6600 also wins in VRAM capacity. But for the most part in 2021, I don't think that was that big of a deal. We saw a few games like Far Cry 6 have its uh, um, high, high definition texture pack, give the uh, 3080 a little bit of trouble, um, I think at 4K, uh, you know, but there wasn't a lot of games where the VRAM issue actually mattered. I know there are a few little isolated incidences here. There are modded versions of games that use a lot of VRAM and things like that. But overall, yeah, NVIDIA wins that. However, let's get into the fact that MSRP isn't real, okay, and is pretty much meaningless. So I ended up buying a 6800 XT because I could find one without too much difficulty for 1200 bucks, which honestly sucks. But the 3080s that I could find were at least fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars at that point in time, and they were honestly hard to find at that price point. And honestly, it kind of seems like when I've been looking at GPUs available, it's almost like 3080s are barely even being produced anymore. And Nvidia actually shifted almost all of that production to the 3080 Ti, which costs way more. And um, the 3080 Ti is a great card, but again, super expensive. And in reality. 
Most gamers aren't buying it that high-end anyway. Most gamers are still on 1080p screens. And so who wins in the 1080p market? Well, that's where I think AMD actually wins. And it's frustrating that the RX 6600 and 6600 XT, which uh, I do have one of those that I test out on my channel, RX 6600 here, um, have been given, a, a, they were criticized heavily in their reviews due to the you know MSRP that they were launching at. However, the thing is, like I said, MSRPs are kind of meaningless. So sure, it on paper costs the same as a 3060, but if you actually try to buy one in the real market, you can almost always find a 6600 for one, two, even $300 cheaper or more than an RTX 3060. So I think AMD has uh, actually won the 1080p segment because you can get an RX 6600 in stock fairly consistently for around $450 to $500. It won't, it won't stay in stock indefinitely, but humans can actually buy them, not just bots. And the 6600 XT I've seen come in stock in the $550 to even $600 range. Again, fairly consistently. And again, humans can actually buy them, not just bots, at those prices. Whereas to get the uh, NVIDIA competitors with the 3060 and the 3060 Ti, which I do think are better cards, especially with that uh, DLSS and better ray tracing performance. Again, I, I care more about that DLSS. But again, those to get actually at those equivalent prices usually have to get like a Best Buy drop, which is pretty much impossible. And th th those get bought up by bots. Good luck. I, I don't know anybody in person who actually got one. Uh, if you did, fantastic. Good job. Um, so anyway, if you don't want to turn hunting for deals into your full-time job, I actually do think for 1080p gaming, AMD wins this year. Now let's talk briefly about drivers, just because I know everybody's always like, but the AMD drivers. So I've had AMD GPU as my main GPU for the last four months, and I have had some driver issues. I have had a few games that like to go to a black screen. That's been mostly Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, where after every 15 or 20 minutes, it seemed to go to a black screen. That was really frustrating. Also, Halo Infinite has black screened every few hours, so that's less of a big deal, but it has given me some issues trying to play ranked competitive modes, where I just flat out lose a game because it did crash. Also, one of the latest uh, AMD driver uh, updates for Halo Infinite, by the way, also made it so when I play uh, videos back, on um, just the default built-in Windows video player, it takes like 15 seconds to start up, which is weird because it didn't take that long on the older drivers. And I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Although some of the issues I had when I first bought it, like OBS not working well with it, um, and like sometimes timing out or not fully closing, uh, those issues have been solved. And I will say that in the meantime, I have also been testing out a GTX 1060, which is an NVIDIA card, and I will say I know it's not one of their newest cards or anything like that, it's pretty old at this point, but I've had driver issues on this as well. The drivers that were supposed to give me NVIDIA image scaling um, didn't give it to me, but uh, eventually a further driver update did, but at first I updated the drivers that were supposed to have it, and it just wasn't there. Also, I've sometimes recorded games and they just didn't record at the actual resolution aspect ratio that I was running them at. And I don't really know why that happened because it usually works, but sometimes doesn't. And I haven't had any issues with that with my AMD cards. And also speaking of recording, my microphone sounds terrible using Nvidia's shadow play, but using the exact same settings uh, on my AMD cards with their Relive or Relive or whatever it's called, their driver uh, game recording stuff, microphone sounds great. So I've had different issues and the actual software itself, I've gone into this into more detail on other videos, but I actually prefer AMD's software overall. It has a lot of built-in features and it's all there in one place. Well, that could be a personal preference thing. All right, I'm going to go uh, uh, help out my girls because they need help changing batteries in their piano. So you guys let me know what you think about all this in, your, uh, in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.